Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this Flame game development series where we are making a simple 2D platformer game using the Flame engine. In the last video, we added code in the player class to handle key inputs and collisions with platforms. So now, the player character can move around in the level. But as you can see, right now the player can very easily get out of the level and I would like to somehow restrict player within the bounds of this current level. Also, if I switch to level 2, you can see that the camera does not actually follow player character. As a result, we are not able to see the right side of this level. So in this video, I will be fixing both these issues. First, let's go to the onload method of our level class. Here, you can see that we call the spawn actors method, which then spawns the player component in the level. So to make the camera follow this player component, I'll call a new method after spawn actors named setup camera. Now let's define this new method. Here to access the camera, we can use the game ref. And on this camera object, I'll call the follow component method. Input to this method can be any position component. In our case, this will be a reference to the player component, which gets created in the spawn actors method. So to get access to player component in setup camera, I'll replace the local player variable with a new late member of type player. And once we do that, we can access the same player object as input to follow component. So if I save this, you can see that the player character is right in the center of the screen. And if I start moving the character, the camera follows it automatically. But the problem of player going out of bounds still persists. So let's fix that next. To make sure that the player does not leave the level, we can clamp the position of player in the player update method. This will have to be done right after we modify the position using velocity and delta time. Now for this clamp, we need a min and max vector. So I'll add them as late members in this class. We can calculate these two vectors if we know the total width and height of current level. And if I open up any of the TMX files, you can see that in here, we get width and height of the map along with the tile width and tile height. So by multiplying these widths and heights, we can calculate the total width and height of the level. So to get these values, let's go back to level.dat file. Here, I'll first add a new late member of type rect called level bounds. Then in the onload method, before spawning actors, let's initialize level bounds. For this, I'll use the rect.fromLTWH named constructor. This constructor expects four inputs. First two of them define the top left corner of the rectangle and the next two define the width and height of this rectangle. In our case, top left corner of level will always be at the origin. So first two values will be zero. Then next, to calculate the width of level, I'll multiply width and tile width member from level.tilemap.map and since both of these are integers we'll have to convert the result into double similarly i'll calculate the level height by multiplying height and tile height okay so now that we have calculated level bounds let's go to the player class here in the player constructor i'll add a required named parameter of type rect called level bounds then in the body of this constructor I'll initialize min clamp with level bounds dot top left and max clamp with level bounds dot bottom right. And as top left and bottom right are of type offset, I'll convert them using the two vector two method. Back in level dot dart, while spawning the player, we'll have to pass the calculated level bound as input to player constructor. And finally, in the player update method, we can use the min clamp and max clamp to clamp the position. Now if I save this and try to move the player out of the level, you can see that it is actually getting clamped but the clamp limits are a little off. To be precise, the clamp limits are off exactly by the size of player component. To fix this, all we have to do is add size to min clamp and subtract size from max clamp. If I save this, you can see that now the clamp is working correctly. But notice how the camera is always trying to keep the player in the center of viewport. As a side effect of this, when player is near the edges of level, the camera shows a lot of empty area outside the level. 
this does not look good. So to fix this, I'll go to the setup camera method of level class and I'll set the world bounce member of camera to level bound. Doing this will make sure that the camera stays within the level bounds. And in the game, you can notice that we don't see any of the empty areas as before. Now, one weird thing that you might have already noticed is, when the player changes direction, the camera just rapidly snaps to a new position. The reason why this happens is because the anchor point for player component is set to the top left corner by default. Which means the camera is actually following the top left corner of player component. So if I set the debug mode for player to true and then try to change the direction of player in game, you can see that because of the horizontal flip that happens around the center of player, the top left corner changes its position instantly. And this causes the snap. So to fix this, we can just set the anchor property of player component to anchor.center while spawning. This will make the camera follow center of player component, which does not change when we flip the component around its center. And as you can see in the game, now we don't get the sudden snap. But because we changed the anchor point of player component, the min and max clamp limits will also have to be modified. So in the player constructor, Instead of shifting the limits by full size, we'll have to shift them by half. For that, I'll create a new variable called half size, which will be initialized by size divided by 2. And then I'll add and subtract this half size from min and max clamp. Now, if we test this in game, you can see that player is getting clamped correctly again. And as all the code that we wrote is level independent, this will work for any level. So that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.